What's up everyone? Welcome back to Tech in Black. Today, I'm checking out a new drone from Holy Stone. This is the Sirius HS900. The company is marketing this as a pretty compact option for aerial footage. It comes in at 249 grams, which, on paper, means it should be easy to travel with and you won't need to register it in a lot of places. So, let's see what this thing is all about. The key feature here is the three-axis mechanical gimbal and a camera that shoots 4K at 30 frames per second. That should mean we get some smooth, stable video. You control it and get the video feed through this controller, which hooks up to your phone with a cable. So, the goal for this video is to really figure out what this drone can do in the real world. We're gonna test out the flight time, the range, see how the video quality holds up, and check out some of the smart features, like follow me mode. All right, so in this review, I'm gonna try to give you my honest take on the Holy Stone HS900. All right, before we get this thing in the air, let's get the controller set up. First thing, we'll flip up the antennas. Next, we pull out the phone holder from the bottom here. And last, we'll screw in the control sticks. They store right here in the controller body, which is super convenient so you don't lose them. Okay, the controller is ready to go. So let's take a look at the controls. One interesting thing is that the controller has two USB-C ports. The one on the left is for charging the controller itself. But this port on the right, that's for connecting to your smartphone. The cable comes right in the box. The phone actually clips in here at the bottom, which pulls out like this. It's a wired connection, so you get a direct video feed without having to worry about Wi-Fi lag. It's a really solid, reliable setup. Now for the buttons, it's all pretty standard stuff. Over here on the left, you've got your return to home button. On the right, this switch lets you cycle through the different speed modes, from a slow cinematic mode all the way up to sport. You've got the main control sticks, which handle your throttle, yaw, and movement. But this little detail here is pretty interesting. This extra mini joystick, it actually has two functions. Moving it vertically lets you adjust the exposure or the brightness of the shot and moving it horizontally activates and sets your cruise control speed. That's super handy for long, smooth shots, so you don't have to keep your thumb on the stick. Up top, right where your index fingers rest, you've got the most important buttons for flying. On the left, you can start and stop video recording. On the right, this one's for taking photos. This little wheel next to it controls the camera tilt, up and down. And this button here is a function button that you can program in the app to do different things like quickly point the camera down or turn on cruise control. Overall, the controller feels really well thought out. All the main controls are right at your fingertips. Okay, now let's get the drone itself ready. First up, the MSD card. Without this, all that 4K video and all your photos have nowhere to go. The slot is right here on the side. Just push the card in until it clicks. Next, the battery. It just slides right into the back of the drone's body. Make sure you hear it click so you know it's locked in securely. Holy Stone claims you can get up to 32 minutes of flight time on a single battery, which is something we'll definitely be testing. All right, everything's in place. Let's power on the controller and then the drone with a short press and then a long press. The app is connected. Before any first flight, I always go straight into the settings menu. First, let's check out the control settings. This is where you can pick your stick mode, mode one, mode two, and so on. I fly in mode 2, where the left stick is for altitude and rotation, and the right stick handles movement. Now the most important thing to do for any flight that's not your first one, turn off beginner mode. It's on by default and it seriously limits your flight distance and altitude, usually to about 99 feet or 30 meters. It's a safety feature, but to really see what the drone can do, you have to switch it off. There we go. Now we can set our maximum altitude and distance manually. Another useful feature is Find My Drone. In here, you can see the last known GPS coordinates. And if the drone goes down somewhere nearby in the grass, you can trigger a beeper to help you find it. And of course, the camera settings. I'm just making sure video resolution is set to 4K 30 frames per second and checking out the other parameters like white balance and saturation. And just so you know, I've already gone ahead and calibrated the compass and set a safe return to home altitude. You always want that to be higher than any trees, buildings, or other obstacles in your flight area. All right, now the drone is fully prepped. It's time to get this thing in the air. All right, everything is ready for the first flight, making sure we've got plenty of open space around. There are two ways to take off. 
The first and easiest way is to use the auto takeoff button in the app. The drone will lift off on its own and just hold its altitude. The second way is a manual takeoff. You move the sticks to the bottom corners to arm the motors, and then you just smoothly push the left stick up. This way, you have full control of the altitude right from the start. And there it is in the air. The first thing that's impressive is just how stable it is. The GPS positioning and the optical flow sensor underneath are doing their job. The drone isn't drifting with the wind, it's locked in place. Just hovering there, waiting for the next command. The response from the sticks feels really smooth, especially in the lowest speed setting. Nice! Now, let's see how it handles at a higher altitude and on the move. Let's get some altitude and see how the footage looks in real-world conditions. It's pretty windy today, which is a perfect test for the three-axis gimbal. And this is where the HS900 really shines. Look at how the trees are swaying down there. The wind is definitely picking up, but the footage stays perfectly smooth. The mechanical gimbal is compensating for all the gusts, keeping the camera completely stable. No jitters, no jello effect. The horizon is locked. For a drone in this price range, the result is just excellent. Right now, we're flying in the slowest, most cinematic mode. It's perfect for those smooth sweeping shots. Let's see what happens when we switch it up. Going into normal mode now, the drone just got a lot more responsive. The speed has increased and it reacts quicker to the sticks. This mode is great for getting to your point of interest quickly. And finally, sport mode. Now that's some real speed. In sport mode, the drone unleashes its full power. It becomes incredibly agile and lets you fly aggressively. Obviously, this mode isn't for shooting smooth video, but for just having fun and flying around, it's a blast. But even here, you can see the gimbal is still working hard to dampen the main vibrations. So we've got a good handle on the stability and the speed modes. Now, let's test out some of the intelligent flight features. Testing out follow me mode. I just selected myself in the app and the drone automatically started keeping me in the frame. It works using GPS and visual tracking, super useful for getting shots on the move when you're by yourself. But this feature isn't just useful for tracking people. Let's see how it handles a more dynamic subject. I'm selecting this car as the target, and the drone immediately locks onto it. The drone is tracking the car confidently, adjusting its speed and trajectory. For creating those cool cinematic car following shots, this is a fantastic tool that used to be found only on much more expensive drones. Now let's test out one of the automatic quick shot maneuvers. We'll select the soaring mode. The concept here is pretty simple. You aim the camera at your subject, our bicycle. Then you set the maximum altitude you want the drone to climb to. Let's go with 30 meters. And then you hit start. And the drone starts its climb. It flies straight up while the camera looks directly down, keeping the subject centered in the frame. This creates a really cool dramatic shot as if you're rocketing into the sky right above your point of interest. Maneuver complete. It's a super easy way to get a beautiful, professional looking shot without ever touching the control sticks. Next is droney mode. We'll target the bike and the drone will fly backward and up, revealing the landscape. It's an automatic and fast way to get a great cinematic shot, showing both the subject and the location. So after flying the Holystone HS900 for a bit, I can say it's genuinely enjoyable to fly. It's predictable, stable, and thanks to the three speed modes, it's great for everything from slow, cinematic shots to more dynamic flying. And the suite of intelligent flight modes is pretty rich here. We tested the rocket and droney quick shots, as well as the follow me mode. But beyond those, this drone also has point of interest, where it circles a subject automatically, and Waypoint Flight, which lets you pre-plan a route on a map for the drone to fly. All of this just makes the creative process that much easier. But the main takeaway, of course, is the image quality. The three-axis gimbal does its job perfectly. As you saw, even with some noticeable wind, the footage stays smooth and stable. The 4K video is detailed, and the colors look natural. Overall, my first flight impressions are really positive. But now, let's go back to the beginning and take a look at what you actually get in the box for your money. Alright, as promised, let's see how this drone is packaged. It comes in this pretty compact box, and the first thing that greets you inside isn't the drone itself, but this really nice carrying case. That's a huge plus, because you don't have to worry about how you're going to transport your gear safely. The manufacturer has already thought of that for you. Let's open it up. 
and you can see everything is neatly organized in its own compartment. Right on top, in a special pocket, we have the user manual. I'd recommend giving this a read before your first flight, especially if this is your first drone. There's a lot of useful info in here. Next up is the controller itself. We've already taken a detailed look at this. It fits snugly in the case, no rattling around. And here's the main event, the Holystone HS900 drone. It's super compact when it's folded up. Notice the gimbal cover that protects the camera and stabilizer during transport. You always have to remember to take this off before you fly. And in this last compartment, we have a box with all the accessories. This is where you'll find the battery, the charging and connection cables, and a set of spare propellers. And a nice little touch, the manufacturer also includes a small screwdriver and spare screws, so if you ever need to replace a prop out in the field, you have everything you need right here. So, as you can see, it's a great kit. You get everything you need to start flying right away and then some. So, what's the takeaway on the Holy Stone Sirius HS900? It's definitely an interesting drone in its category. It's lightweight, under 250 grams, which makes it easier to use in a lot of countries. The included kit with the carrying case is a big plus. You have everything you need to get started. In the air, the drone feels predictable and stable, even in a bit of wind. But its main strength is, of course, the camera on that three-axis gimbal. It delivers smooth, steady footage, and the 4K resolution gives you good detail. For its price, this drone offers an impressive set of features and solid video quality. So to sum it all up, let's highlight the five main pros of the Holy Stone HS900. First, stabilization and 4K. Second, 249 grams. Third, great kit. Fourth, smart modes. And fifth, stable flight. Overall, for the money, this is a great choice. I recommend it. As for the price, it can vary depending on the retailer, your region, and any current sales. To check the latest price, I'll leave a link to Amazon in the description below this video. You can follow that to check it out and order one if you decide to. That's all for me on this one. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on new reviews. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!